Good morning, everyone. This afternoon's presentation is on the neuropsychological disorder hemineglect. And those of you already familiar with the disorder hemineglect might recognize the image in the top right corner here. This image is not actually just a representation of what a patient with unilateral hemineglect might be observing in their natural field. It's actually a little more interesting. Um, this image was painted by an artist named Reynold Brown, and Reynold Brown actually suffered from hemineglect. So this is not an artistic representation of what a patient with hemineglect might see. This is actually Reynold Brown attempting to paint after he suffered a right parietal stroke. Um, so what is hemineglect? Well, to understand hemineglect, we need to understand that our visual field is actually divided up into two areas. And most of us take this for granted because we see the world around us in just sort of a continuous space. But in actuality, if we were to topically map out the visual areas of our brain, at least the early ones, they divide the left and right fields in front of us into two hemispaces. And what happens with hemineglect is one of these spaces ceases to exist. So the way we'll discuss unilateral hemineglect this morning will be the manifestations of the disorder, the etiology. We'll look at a case study with a patient named Janet, uh, the contributions that the dis this disorder has brought to our understanding of some neuropsychology, and as well as a second case study with a suggested test that could have been administered to that case study patient. So some of the manifestations, this as well, you'll see these um, images from other artists. There's actually quite a few. There's an article about Besner and Hannah Risi. Um, this one here is Anton Riedershit, again, suffering a right parietal stroke. So what is unilateral neglect? Well, if we were to test a patient with a figure copy drawing such as this, um, we were to say just simply copy exactly what you see here, this is what we would get. So this would be a, a certain form of known as object-centered neglect. Also, if we could um, present the patient with a spatial map, and this test is called the line bisection test, and just simply ask the patient to cross out every line that they see, um, the patient would produce something like this. Um, and this is termed a visual spatial neglect. So the patient can see the entire field here, they just are not able to attend to the left side of the image. Now this raises certain questions, at least it did when I first started learning the disorder. So for example, if the patient just simply can't see it, well why don't we just simply move it over to their other visual field? So if, and indeed this does happen in certain patients, this is what we term a visual field cut. Um, so given the ipsilateral and contralateral organization of the primary visual areas, um, perhaps it's just that the patient is not able to see the left side of the object or test that you're giving them, which is why they can't present it to them. Um, and indeed certain patients, including Janet, they've done this, so they just simply slide the image over to the right. And the amazing thing with this disorder is that the deficit persists. So although the patient is able actually to visualize the entire test and the entire space, they still are only able to attend or act upon the half that's unaffected by the disorder. Um, there's an interesting test which kind of draws out this phenomenon a little bit further. So uh, the original test was done with an area in, I believe it was Rome, it was somewhere in Italy. Uh, but just to illustrate the phenomenon, here's a map of our humble campus. So if we were to take a patient and say, just visualize this, just start at, uh, say, Grad House, here indicated by the blue star, and I want you to describe all the objects you would pass on your way to optometry at the north end of campus. Well, the patient would describe our CH, the engineering building, DC library, the plant ops facility, crossing the ring road. They would basically describe everything on the right side. They would miss Dana Porter, Needless Hell, the bio buildings, SLC. So it's as if the left half of the map just ceases to exist. They wouldn't encounter it on their way. Now what really makes this interesting is if we were to reverse the task. So if we ask the patient to start at optometry and walk your way south to Grad House, the patient would then say Ring Road, the health buildings, SLC, the bio buildings, the DP library. So now in this instance, the, the other half, the east half of the map is obliterated. So the interesting thing is that although the patient is unable to attend to it, and they'll they'll deny it. They'll say, no, I wouldn't pass any other buildings. The map is still intact at some level of their memory. Um, these disorders persist throughout motor and sensory function as well. So if we tap baby boy here and ask him which leg was tapped, he'll say the right. And the interesting thing is if we tap them on the left, he'll say left. But if we tap both, he'll say the right. And this is what's termed extinction. So it's as if one impulse is strong enough to get through but if both are presented, then um, there's some kind of overriding factor so that the unaffected side, so again, in most patients with unilateral hemineglect, it manifests with a right parietal lesion. So in this case, the patient would be able to pick up right sensory information through the left premotor cortex. 
and this is a, a form of tactile neglect. Motor neglect, this is actually a, an image I found of congestive heart failure. The effects, I'm not really sure what a hemiparesis is supposed to look like, so we'll just use the fuzzy areas to envision it. Um, can manifest in the form of a hemiplegia, so it's just half that's unaffected. And the, uh, the phenomenon of extinction persists here. So if we ask a patient to raise your right leg, or right arm, sorry, they will do that. If we ask them to raise their left arm, they will do that as well. But if we ask them to raise both, they only raise the right. So again, the phenomenon of extinction persists with motor commands. Um, there are also more unique kind of the typical neuropsychology textbook cases um, or disorders, sorry. So uh, with, with the patient, um, Janet, she had a specific form of dressing apraxia. So she would only be able to don the right side of her clothing. And when asked uh, to put, you know, her left sleeve or her left pant leg on, she would deny it and come up with some kind of reason saying like, oh, I, you know, I don't feel like it or I don't want to. Or I'm starting a new trend. Um, so how do these how do these disorders come around? What's your typical neuropsychological um, type of reaction? So from infarctions, from uh, hemorrhagic stroke, from cerebral edema, um, or in the case of our patient Janet, a tumor. Um, so with our specific case study patient Janet, um, on the day of her 50th birthday, she collided with the left side of her garage door. Um, she actually blew out only half of the candles, uh, the right side on her birthday cake. Two days later, the husband found the patient collapsed in the bathroom. Uh, they found her to be confused, disoriented, um, and she probably suffered a general seizure. The patient was found to have a large tumor, um, in clinical terms, a grade 2 astrocytoma, positioned in the right parietal lobe, uh, accompanied by significant cerebral edema. Um, Upon conducting a neurological exam, they found a marked visual spatial neglect to the left side, a motor neglect of the left side, a left visual field cut, as well as some sensory loss in her left arm. Um, they treated her with steroids to reduce the oedema or the brain swelling. They did a you know, rather crude surgery to debulk the mass and then continued with adjunctive radiation therapy, um, as well as physical rehab. Her post-treatment course after medical treatment um, of the tumor she and physio, she was able to return to work. She worked part-time for 18 months, um, 23 months post-op. The symptoms returned, though, unfortunately. The tumor had grown back um, on further imaging study. It was larger than it was initially uh, at presentation. Janet refused any treatment at this point other than steroids, and she died four years after her initial diagnosis. So what did Janet teach us um, about neuropsychology? Well, she completed some of the more interesting tests um, that have been posited by other psychologists in the field. So the Biasic and Luzzati test, uh, which is the MAP one, she completed that, um, indicating that the MAP uh, was still intact. In, in her case, they used a, a spatial map of New Zealand with the North and South Island. Um, with a line bisection test, she did that as well. They slipped it into the right visual field. She still only attended the right half. And something interesting with Janet is a term of uh, anosodiaphoria. So the chapter begins with the author discovering Janet half-dressed. Um, she replies, it's a new trend she's starting. Uh, Janet has rather marked and bizarre uh, disabilities, but unfortunately they rarely seem to trouble her. Um, she seemed either indifferent or she didn't even seem to notice them at all. This is another one of these words, the reason people hate psychologists, but also dysphoria, so it's an indifference to weakness or disability. Um, there's some literature that suggests that perhaps the is some form of lateralization. So this could be contrasted with a patient who suffered a left sided lesion um, as opposed to Janet's right sided lesion. They would usually suffer from catastrophic depression, whereas Janet, as we mentioned, was more or less indifferent. Um, a further case study we examined was uh, by Ramachandran. You know, Ramachandran is one of the great neuropsychological persons. He spoke uh, TED a couple of times, and just any time you need to do a presentation, Ramachandran is one of the best. Um, he's termed this thing mere agnosia. So he took four case study patients, all kind of in their more elderly range. All had suffered right parietal lesions, secondary to infarctions. Um, they reconfirmed a left field hem neglect in all. Um, and this was tested with the clock rate production, line bisection, and line cancellation. Um, the mirror was brought to the patient's bedside and propped up on their right side. Um, they noted here that the mirror they selected was obviously a mirror. It wasn't just, just a mirror. Um, it had a large wooden frame. There was dust on the glass. So it's positioned here on the right side, the quote-unquote patient's good side. Um, the stimuli, they had another presentation, or sorry, another experimenter standing behind the patient. Um, on cue, the second person presents a chocolate bar. It's positioned visually in the left side of the patient's cheek, so in the mirror. Um, the reflection is cast on the right side of the mirror. 
um, because of you know the, the mirror effect. Um, physically, it's within the grasp of the patient's good arm. So here it's on the right. So even if it is object-centered neglect and the patient is cutting this image in half, it's still on her quote-unquote good side. Um, it's within spatially her entire good side, and she's able to act upon it with her good side. Um, when asked spontaneously, what do you see? The patient confirms it's a candy bar. So they're confirming that they can see the object, that they understand what the object is. Uh, when the patient is asked to grab the candy bar, they reach into the mirror. Um, and this is what's termed mirror agnosia. So although the image is cast on the right side of the mirror, the patient is able to answer an open-ended question as in what do you see? They still bizarrely um, act upon this. And these patients are not that otherwise subtunded or suffering from dementia. Um, this seems like the most rational thing to do. They assume that the, that the object is in the mirror. Um, with Janet, we would suggest repeating this test, especially given her history of creative reasons why she does not want to act upon her left hemispace. Thank you very much.